to start their comb on and, and draw down. Steven and I'm out here at my friend's farm uh, installing a beehive for the first time and I wanted to share a little bit uh, about my setup and how I'm going to install them. So for the hives we're using all mediums uh, eight frames and the reason we chose to do that uh, is because they're smaller and lighter easier to work with once they're filled with um, honey or brood. You'll have all the same size pieces so all the the hive uh, supers, the brood, you can all interchange them. Uh, the frames are the same size. Uh, if you're using foundation, the foundation would be the same size. Uh, so that's one of the great advantages to using all mediums. So I'm gonna try that out and see how we like it. As you can see, I have my package of bees here and they're an Italian variety uh, that are Varroa mite resistant. And that's actually the queen I mean, it's Varroa mite resistant. So with this hive, our intention was to be as natural as possible. Basically what that means is we've chosen to not use foundation. Foundation is uh, made from beeswax and it's stamped into the hexagonal pattern that the bees make. But in reading into this further, I discovered that when using foundation, the bees are not able to build their hive in a natural way. They are locked into using this cell size. But in a natural hive, um, the bees would create their comb of different sizes for the different broods. So for the drones, it's a different size. For the worker bees, it's a different size. And in addition to that, I found out that in a natural hive, 20% of the comb is for drones. But in a foundation-based hive, only 5% of the comb is used for the drones. What this means is the genetic uh, variety of these bees is dramatically re reduced. Um, I think that's probably not a good idea, uh, especially if we're trying to increase the health of the honeybee population. Um, another reason I, th I have a problem with foundation is that this is made from uh, beeswax. So you would think, hey, it's clean, it's great, it's good. But in actuality, the foundation is taken from uh, beehive from you know, all over the country or even all over the world. And we don't know what they're using on their beehives. If they're using the miticide, if there's pesticides in the plants nearby, all of that ends up in this foundation. Beeswax is uh, extremely receptive of toxins and it will hold it in the wax. So because of those reasons, I, I feel that you know, foundation is you know, a bit inferior from a healthy standpoint. Um, but you know, in talking to some different beekeepers, you know, there's a lot of good reasons why they use these commercially, uh, because it's a huge time saver. The comb is, is, is drawn out perfectly um, you know, almost every time. Uh, with foundationless, you gotta, you gotta baby the bees a little more. You gotta make sure that the comb is drawn straight. So I totally understand why the commercial guys do it, but for starting out with these just two small hives, I want to do it the cleanest way possible. So I'm also running a little experiment. As you've seen, I have the one foundation uh, frame. I also have a frame with a foundation starter strip. Um, some of the guys who do foundation lists do it like this, um, so I wanted to try that. And then I also have what I'd like to use all the time because it's the easiest to make uh, and cheapest. And all this is, is this is just your standard wedge top uh, frame. And the bottom is a solid bottom bar. Uh, I just want it to have as much structural integrity as possible. So basically what you do is um, on your wedge top, you snap off uh, the piece that comes with the wedge top and you flip it 90 degrees and then I just took my nail gun and, and shot it in there. Um, so that gives them enough to start their comb on and, and, and draw down. So the experiment is to see, you know, what, which, which frame did they choose first to start their comb on. So we'll see, I'll shoot a future video um, showing that. I'm then going to prepare my uh, feeder. I'm feeding them a uh, one-to-one water to sugar ratio sugar syrup. And now, I actually made a mistake. Um, I bought cane sugar, and it's cane sugar that's not processed as much, so that's why it has this brown color. And that's okay, but 
it can cause problems if they eat this for a long period of time. So I'm going to switch to the fully refined, regular white cane sugar. Um, but it, this is kind of cool and I wonder if maybe you can play with it a little bit, but this cane sugar has more nutrients than the, the regular refined white sugar. So a little more nutrients, but the problem with it is it has a lot of fiber. So it causes what is called bee dysentery and can damage the bees over time. So I'm gonna feed it to them right now and to, um, the next time I refill it, I'm gonna refill it with just the standard white um, that everybody says works great. Um, I'm planning on feeding them for one month. And I got that advice from a master beekeeper, the guy I uh, bought these from. And according to him, using foundationless, he, he recommended using a sugar syrup for about a month. And we are actually in San Diego, so right now it's about 75 degrees. We have flowers, there's pollen, uh, so they'll have no problem getting their hive started. But we want to give them a little jump start with the feed. So with the feed, um, since I have mediums, I have to use three bodies to make this happen. So I've got my inner cover here. And on the inner cover, I'm gonna rest my bee feeder. As you can see, I have a front entry feeder, but I decided in the long run that this is kind of a better way to feed them because I'm just worried about raccoons or skunks, you know, coming and, you know, trying to get at this. And I wanna give the bees the best start possible, so I'm gonna keep them safe in here. And I'm only gonna feed them for a month. And then I want them to just feed themselves and, and, and do what they do best. So when I finish, yeah, I'll just put the sugar syrup in, put the top on, and I've sealed the front entrance here with a brick. So, and you can see the, I have my entrance reducer here. It's ready to go, but we're gonna trap them in there overnight and release them in the morning. And I've actually positioned the front of this. The front of the beehive is facing north. And I wanted them to face this way uh, because as you can see, we have a farm here. And I'd like the bees to enter and exit um, away from us. So that's why they're facing this way. The other side facing out is facing to the south. So in the, in the winter time, uh, it'll get the southern facing sun exposure. So yeah, that's my setup.